More than 700,000 people die by suicide each year, according to the World Health Organization. Uh, that is a, a, a life lost every second. Uh, Nigeria has a high suicide rate among African countries. As the world marks World Suicide Prevention Day, a psychologist, Benedict Sama, talks about the increasing rate of suicide in the country. Take a listen. Nigeria currently has been reporting the highest number of depression cases in Africa. And depression is, as been reported, as the leading cause of suicide. Then you can explain why Nigeria keeps um, keep reporting the highest rate of suicide. One of now we're joined by Dr. Deborah Eniola, Quality Improvement Manager and Mental Health Practitioner from the UK. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Deborah. Dr. Deborah, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you now. Uh, Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Deborah. Thank you for joining us on the news now. The news now on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for having me. Okay, now we're talking about suicide. Today is World Suicide Prevention Day. Uh, let's differentiate between self-harm and suicide. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, at what stage does self-harm uh, metamorphose into suicide? All right, um, to answer your first question, so uh, self-harm is often misconstrued as being directly linked with suicide, but this is not the case. Uh, both of them, they are drastically different. So since suicide and self-harm are inflictions of pain, they often get grouped together. So uh, people who self-harm, they may later commit suicide. However, people who engage in deliberate self-harm, they don't wish to end their life. So it's, it's, a, it's, a form of, it's a form of coping with life, with life stresses. So individuals who attempt suicide, they do so with intent. So there is a reason for wanting to commit suicide. So for people who self-harm, it's often a coping mechanism. However, people that do commit suicide, it's because they want to end their suffering. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, Self-harm, uh, coping mechanism, suicide. Yes. They just want to end it all. They just want to end it. Absolutely. Now, 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 so so uh, what's the number one cause of suicide? Just want, wanted to end it all? Or what would you say is the number one cause of suicide? So I, I agree with the, uh, the psychologist that you just played his, uh, his, uh, his message to us earlier on. The depression is... Uh, can be, you know, one of the causes of suicide. However, majority of people who commit suicide have experienced a, a number of stressful life events. So major what we need to keep a uh, tab of is a stress li stressors in life three months prior to committing suicide. So it could be interpersonal problems, rejection, like separation from family and friends, uh, loss events, financial loss, bereavement, uh, work and financial problems, changes in society. So a rapid political and economic changes can cause people uh, to want to commit suicide. So if you as a man or a woman feel like I cannot provide for my family and the, the, the only alternative that you have is to end it all. So various life stressors um, can cause people to want to commit suicide. Oh, that's, that's, that's really revealing. Okay, now, uh, why are young people uh, mostly at risk of suicide, according to WHO? <laughs> so, uh, as we know, uh, a period of uh, adolescence or youth, youthfulness, as we refer to it, uh, you know, uh, as Nigerians, uh, is characterized by changes transitions from one state of uh, one state of life into another so several domains at the same time puberty happening you know moving into university or moving into college uh, living situation uh, peer group bullying uh, loss of self-esteem uh, young people trying to build their own identity developing self-esteem increasing uh increasing the independence when people go to university and how to manage intimate relationship so these are psychological events that happen in young people's lives that if you don't know how to undo them then it becomes uh, it can become a time of distress 
for young for our young people so young people often feel a sense of insecurity and if we don't manage that very well then we can you know young people will rely on uh, substance abuse, which can then lead to drug overdose. It can lead to deliberate self-harm, depression, then leading up to suicide. Oh, amazing. Now, uh, the, the, the theme for this year is, um, uh, uh, <laughs> should I say, celebration of prevention or caution or message. The yeah. theme is creating hope uh, through action. Now, action, yes. now, yes, creating hope through action. What actions can we take? What practical actions can we take uh, at home, at work, uh, in our small communities to mitigate uh, this menace? So I, I think it's important that we, we uh, clarify that uh, suicide comes into in three risks. So okay. you have the low risk. So depending on the risk, uh, that's how you manage, you know, we can manage this, uh, this menace, as you call it. If it is low risk, then we can have uh, conversations with those people. We can offer emotional support as friends. We can support them in working through uh, their suicidal feelings. The more the person talks about it, the more they talk about loss, the more they talk about the isolation they're feeling, then the less the emotional turmoil, they, they, you know, becomes for them. We need to make sure we're focusing on people's positive strengths by getting them to talk um, of how earlier problems can be resolved without resorting to suicide. Get the person to commit to a contract that I will not do anything harmful to myself without talking to an accountable partner. So be an accountable partner for the other person. Give people hope, and that's what we're talking about this year. Give people hope through actions. So don't just say, what is the matter with you? Be prepared to listen. Be prepared to be a shoulder for them. If it is a medium risk, and this person has a suicidal thought, and, but have no plans to commit suicide immediately, we still need to act. We need to offer emotional support. We need to refer them to a mental health practitioner. So we have lots of mental health hospitals in Nigeria. So we need to make sure we're referring to, you know, them to a healthcare provider that understands that suicide should not be treated as a thing of shame. We need to we need to stop the stigma about people who have depression. People will think, you know, life is not worth living. It's how we approach it, how we support them. It's important that we make a contract. So I'm going to stick to that. Extract a promise from that person that they will not commit suicide without contacting either a healthcare professional or a loved one that they can speak to. Referral to psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, you know, doctors in Nigeria, make an appointment as soon as possible. If it is a high risk, we need to ensure that we clear the environment of anything, you know, things like pills, things like knives, guns, insecticide. You know, that is one that is common uh, in Nigeria. So insecticide, we need to make sure that we clear the environment of things that are accessible to them to harm themselves. So anything that is a mean of, uh, that can be a means of uh, committing suicide, we need to clear it. Stay with your family, stay with the person. So if a person is at high risk of suicide, never leave them alone. That would be a very dangerous thing to do. So overall, contact a mental health professional or a doctor immediately. If they're at high risk, it is important that you arrange hospitalization for that person. Just a temporary time where they can get support, you know, from healthcare professionals and their family. <laughs> I'm going to summarize uh, your last point in, in, in three ways, uh, in three words. I'm going to summarize. Number one, support. Number two, support. Number three, support. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. My, my last question to you tonight, Dr. Deborah, my last question. Unlike in your part of the world, we in Nigeria don't take mental health seriously. We don't. So what do you suggest we do differently? So, again, earlier on, I mentioned about stigma. And that's one thing that we, uh, you know, uh, I, I am Nigerian, so it's something that we need to <laughs> continue talking about. So stigma surrounding mental disorders and suicide, yeah. we need to eradicate that stigma. We need to get people talking about what's going on. So Nigerian, you know, Department of Health, Ministry of Health in Nigeria, we need to create an awareness of suicide. It is earlier on uh, at your introduction, you mentioned that it's a major public health issue. So we need a national suicide prevention strategy. 
speak to the local healthcare providers, community health centers. They can support with providing, raising awareness, breaking down the taboo is important for Nigerians. So that's the only way we can do it. Speak to people in the community. We can identify who is distressed, who is depressed, and start putting in some interventions. So stigma, we need to eradicate that, and community health centers, equipping community health centers with the interventions, with the skills that they need to support people. Thank you very much, Dr. Deborah. Stigma out, support in. Absolutely. Thank you. My regards to your family. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.